My name is Vahid Chitsas, part of the Elite Mastermind Group. Thank you so much for being here, Kevin. Go ahead and introduce yourself to everybody. Let us know where you're tuning in from. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Hi, guys. My name is Kevin Nahai. Um, I am tuning in from Los Angeles, uh, California, born and raised here. Very nice to meet you all. Very happy Same here. Kevin, somebody is doing a fantastic job on your Instagram account. Whoever it is, uh, they, need, they need to come and work for me. So I definitely give their information because you're kicking my butt on that side for sure. You got so much content, I didn't know what to Like, you got more videos than, than me. Like, that's not cool, man. You definitely are. You're definitely cranking some stuff. So let's talk about some interesting topic. You talk about relationship. I think you had a video on what is the right time to move on, all of these. How is... How should your relationship be with your business and your craft versus just a girlfriend, a boyfriend, or a husband? Or wife? You're saying what's the difference between your relationship to your romantic partner and your relationship to money, success, your job, everything like that? Correct. Correct. How are they different? Well, they're, they're different in one way and they're the same in the other way. So the way in which that they're the same is that the way you treat your boyfriend or girlfriend is the way you treat your employees it's the way you treat the waiter it's the way you treat the janitor so if you're kind and warm and affectionate and supportive and loving and caring then you're going to be that way with your employees you know even if you try to pretend that you are different in business than you are with your wife you're not really so that's the way in which it's the same is is your personality and your approach in your employees or your coworkers is going to come through eventually. But the way in which it's different is that the things you can do in business when you are in a healthy, happy relationship is like shot to the moon, astronomical, versus when you're single. So a lot of people believe that if I'm single, I can focus all my time and effort and energy on my work and I won't have distractions and therefore I'll, I'll be more successful. And that is true if you're in a bad relationship or an unhealthy relationship. But if you're in a good relationship, one that is stable and long-term with a lot of trust and open communication and all those good things, you are 10 times more successful in your business because you have that emotional foundation. You have a support system and you have this incredible person to rely on. Now, in terms of how you approach your business versus your relationship, I think that your relationship has to be the thing that you protect above everything because it's the most sacred thing in your life. And I also think that I'm a big believer in the concept of work-life balance. And a lot of people say that if you wanna be successful and make money and all of that stuff, you have to work eight days a week, 100 hours a week, no time for a girlfriend, you know, all that kind of stuff. And I have known plenty of people, multimillionaires, people who own companies, people who have done incredible things in business, who also make it their priority to spend time with their family, spend time with their children. They have hobbies outside of just work so that they're fulfilled on many levels other than professionally. Okay. So, I mean, you answer my question that, that was running through my head that there are unhealthy relationships. Of course. Where they do distract you. So is it your personal opinion that there's no, is there a perfect person for you or you find a person and then make it perfect? I don't think either is the case. Uh, there's no perfect person for you because nobody is going to have 10 out of 10 of the things you want. Nobody's going to have 100% of your checklist. And it's also not the case that you find a person and then make them perfect because you can't change a person and you can't morph them or manipulate them into what you want. What I believe is the case is that it's very important to have standards and a very clear idea of what you want. And then you find a person who matches up with most of that. So if you've got 10 things you want, maybe they don't have all 10, but they have seven or eight. So then you look at the two or three things that they're missing. Well, how important are those things to you? If those two or three things are non-negotiable, you must have them, then it doesn't matter that they have seven of the things you want, you move on. If those two or three things are things that you can live with 
and they have seven of your things that are absolute necessities, then you have to have a flexible view of relationships and you have to be open to the fact that if you are looking for a perfect person who marks off 10 out of 10 of your checkboxes, you're gonna be single for a really long time. Is that true also for business too? Like you can go into a career where it has like seven or eight of your, your checklist and then you're not happy. Well, I think you are have been more successful in business than I have, and you're older than me, and you probably have more experience in that. So I'd like to hear your opinion. But yeah, I think that you I know, mean, I think seven or eight is pretty cool. I mean, listen, if you go on, for example, this is the funny joke that I make with my wife. Uh, for some reason, eHarmony thinks I get divorced every like two to four years <laughs> because they go on this whole entire rampage where they keep sending me emails. And one time I put it on my Facebook, I'm like, somebody needs to call eHarmony because they're doing it again. They're going to hear it from my wife. She's an attorney. They need to stop doing it. Oh, my God. That's but, you know, so for some reason, I'm on some type of list. They think I get divorced every couple of years, and they send me emails. So, but I know a few individuals that have gone through eHarmony, and there are settings, which is exactly what you just said. That there, there are things that you're not willing to compromise, like drinking, smoking, you want kids, what's up in income, where do you live, all of these different things that they are your negotiable. They are the things that you have some flexibility. I think it's the same in business to an extent where the career that you pick may not have everything that you want. But you got to have certain things to be passionate about. Of course. If and you I'm, don't have that, then it's not going to work. Yeah, and, and I'm also a big believer that, you know, at least in, in Los Angeles and largely in the U.S., you know, but here especially because we're in Hollywood and all this kind of stuff, everybody has this idea that they have to have their dream career and it has to be perfect and they have to be a millionaire by age 27 and follow your dream, follow your passion, find your purpose in life and, you know, all that kind of stuff. And look, if you know what your purpose is and you can turn it into your career, then you're very, very lucky. But I believe that whatever it is that you do, whether it's construction or working in a restaurant or being a doctor or a CEO, you can find purpose and fulfillment in whatever you're doing. So I think that I, I agree with you. You know, your career might be fulfilling to you in that it puts money in your bank account and puts food on the table for your children. So is it the best thing of all time? Is it your dream job? Is it what you want to wake up and do every single day? Maybe not. But does that mean that you should go quit your job, not pay your bills and not be able to provide for your family? I don't think so. So this idea of like, find your dream career and pursue it at all costs and don't do anything that you're not a thousand percent passionate about. I don't really believe that's the case to tell you the truth because I've done so many things in my life. I've had so many different careers, been a personal trainer. I've been a waiter. I have worked in a record label. I was a professional musician for a long time. And each one of those things had some things that I really liked and had some things that I wasn't crazy about, but each thing evolved and morphed into the next thing. And the important thing was that when I realized it was no longer for me, I wasn't afraid to take the next step. But every day when you wake up, whatever you're doing, whether you're a person- But Kevin, you understand as being a Persian person, you having the ability to do that, you have superhuman power. Me have the ability to do what? Be able to, <laughs> to have those careers and have a, have a Persian family. Listen. You get three choices in life. You either become a doctor, a lawyer, an scenario, you become an attorney. If they let you off, you become an engineer. I don't know how you have done that book. I don't know how you've done it, but you need to write a book on that because so many people will buy it. That's a good idea. But look, <laughs> you know, yeah, my parents wanted, I'm sure they, they were not happy with many of my career choices. And I wasn't even certain of my career choices. You know, for me, it was, I'm going to try this thing out because there's something I'm passionate about. Maybe it's not my dream career, but I don't know what my, I didn't know what my dream career was. So I said, at the very least, 
I'm going to do something that I am passionate about rather than medicine or law, which or real estate, which I had zero passion for. So the point that I'm trying to make is that in business, it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect. It doesn't have to be, I'm going to become the next Brad Pitt. You know, whatever you're doing, you can still be a leader. You can still find fulfillment in it. You can still find a way to make other people's lives better. If you wake up and you're absolutely miserable and you absolutely hate it, then yeah, of course, change careers. But I think that the key in business, and again, take this with a grain of salt because I'm not an experienced business person. I'm young and so forth and so on. But I think the key in business is rather than focusing on yourself and how do I make money? How do I get the title I want? How do I rise to prestige and fame? The question is, okay, this is what I have in my business. How do I use this to make other people's lives better? And when you're, con when you're focusing on contributing something to another person's life and adding more value to their life, making things easier for them, making things more convenient for them, then no matter what you're doing, it's fulfilling. It gives you a personal satisfaction to put a smile on another person's face. And as many business coaches have taught me, the only way to create real wealth in the world is to add more value to someone's life than the next guy. You know, I agree so, with that. So as, a, as a coach, I'm always thinking, okay, 10 million people out there, they have, they have 100,000 options of coaches they could hire, right? Why would they hire me? What is it that I can do for them? What's the value that I can add to their lives that, for example, another coach can't? And then the question becomes, okay, well, what specifically can I offer that other coaches can't? And the way you answer that is, what am I good at and what do I love to do? So what are the issues I'm passionate about and what are the issues I'm an expert on? If you come to me, Vahid, and you say, I want to 10X my business, I can't be your coach. I have no idea how to 10X your business. If you come to me, you know, so you got to go to the other coach. I can't add more value in that case than the other coach. But if you come to me and you say, I have major anxiety problems, or I'm fighting with my wife, or I have this, I can't lose weight or whatever it is, then I know that's my area of expertise. And I'm constantly working to become better than the next guy. I agree with that. I mean, there's always experts in every field and you should try to work with the experts. I agree with that 100%. So here's my question. I feel like there's a whole segment of individuals when they get older, for them getting themselves a coach and a mentor, it's not an easy thing because they think that society expects them to have their shit together, mm -hmm. but they don't have it together. Mm -hmm. What do you say to those people that are not taking advantage of coaches and mentors and, and someone to guide them and navigate them through the specific need that they have? Well, it's interesting you said that you see that in the older generation because you would be surprised how many people in the younger generation feel that as well. Hmm. So young people feel this enormous pressure to have it figured all out. And if they don't figure have it figured all out, or if they need some guidance, they feel shame about that. They feel like somehow they're a failure. And older people feel like, you know what, I'm already 45, you know, I more or less have my shit together. I'm not gonna learn anything new at this point. And, you know, basically what's done is done. And both of those perspectives could not be more wrong. And both of those perspectives show the lack of a growth mindset. So a growth mindset is constantly being coachable, constantly wanting to learn from other people who have more experience in certain areas than you do, constantly striving to grow and become better. And the prerequisite to that growth mindset is humility. You have to be humble enough to say, I'm not where I want to be in my life, and that's okay. So I'm going to put on my big boy, big boy panties and figure out what I have to do to make some changes. And our ego protects us from doing that. Our ego wants to say, 
I'm fine. I don't need help. I don't need guidance. I got it. You know, nobody can tell me anything new, blah, blah, blah. But what I say to those people is, okay, how, how is that working out for you? <laughs> you know, don't let your ego control your mind and prevent you from having all the things that you want in your life. And what I can tell you is that whether it's me, a therapist, a psychiatrist, some other coach, I don't care. The second you hire somebody who is hands-on, you're accountable to them, and they are showing you, they are guiding you through these processes, it stops being a journey where you're constantly searching for answers. You don't know what the hell you should do. You know, you try this one day, you try that the next day, and it becomes a process. And what I mean by a process is, do this on this day, do this on this day, learn these tools, learn how to integrate these practices into your life. And you make progress when you have a model. You make progress when you actually know what to do. If you're sitting on your ass reading all of these books about like personal development and you know, how to be happy and stuff like that. That's great in that it's educational, but a coach is the person who actually shows you how to implement it into your own life. So get over that, that initial hump of, you know, I, I don't wanna hire someone or things are already there with the way they are, whatever. Admit that there's a problem, admit that there's something you wanna change and then enlist help, you know? If the analogy I always give is if you were drowning in the ocean and somebody threw you a life vest, would you throw it behind you and say, no, I can do it myself? Or would you argue about the color, the size, how old is it? You know, I'm going to wait for the next ship to come up. Like, you're drowning. <laughs> Let's get you on the boat first and then we'll complain. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. No, I, I, I agree with that 100%. How can people find you? Um, always on Instagram right here. My Instagram is just my name, Kevin Nahai. You can always send me a DM and then we can exchange emails and stuff like that. I appreciate you taking this busy, you know, this time out of your busy schedule being with us. Hopefully we get to do more. There's so many topics we got to cover, man. There's like so much. And I, I'm a big believer that if your personal relationship is going great, your business will do great automatically. Like, I'm a big believer in that, and I have seen it with my own eyes that a lot of times it's happened. And the only reason I'm having success is because of my wife. Everybody knows that. So i got to put that disclaimer in there. If you want to, I have to put that in there so you know, right? But I genuinely mean that because I've seen so many people that things weren't great, but when they added that, when things at home were better, they got better in their business. 100%. But I also know a lot of people don't think like that. Well, we got to show them proof. Well, like, this could definitely work for you to be able to do that. Kevin, thank you so much for being here. Listen, brother, we're in LA too. So whenever you want to come to our studio, whenever this COVID-19, whatever, whenever this is over, you and I definitely can get in the studio and do actual live I would love to. Thank you. For I appreciate you being here. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Talk thank to you soon, Kevin. Bye-bye.